I have a little application here that I've uh, written for Dino and TypeScript, but it's actually using Express. Um, you can see I'm using Express here, actually using the new Express 5. Um, and this is all, of, all the requests, all the application does. So um, creating an app here, I'm, I have a, a handler that handles API calls to API book with an ID, and then it makes a database call, and we're just serving that on port 8000. And I'm not actually connecting to a database. Um, I just have like a little fake database in this function that takes 300 milliseconds. Um, so let's add some logs over here. And I'm not going to associate them with any request ID. I'm just going to print out the same logs that you saw um, in my slides. So uh, yeah, copilot, good, good. Why write code yourself if you, have, if you can have someone else do it? Um, console log. And here we're going to print out database get book from database. And let's print out the book ID as well. And let's restart the server and curl this. And you can see it didn't print out any request IDs, but I have a trick up my sleeve, which is that actually this is exporting logs to my telemetry system, to Grafana right now. And you can see all the logs here. Um, and you still don't see any trace IDs or any, any request IDs. But if I click on one of these logs, um, there is this ID associated with that log. And if I filter down by this trace ID, you can now see that I'm only seeing logs for that specific request. So Dino has somehow automatically added an ID to each of my logs that associates it with the request that it came from. And this is particularly useful for the error, right? Um, I have an error here. Don't know where it came from. Let me filter it by the trace ID. And I can see it was book two. So yay. So this is the latest request. And you can see there's currently only a single span here, this root span from the HTTP server. Um, and it has some attributes on it, like it responded with a 200 status code. This is the path that I hit. Um, this is how long it took. But we probably also want to like, instrument our database query. So how do we do that? Well, it's really easy. You just um, write some code that does this. And I have a little helper utility called with span that I can just wrap any function with, give it a name. Uh, let's call this get book from database. Sorry, this is sort of like scrolling off the screen here. And parentheses. And this is going to pass in the span that it creates. And I can use that to record some attributes onto the span. So maybe I want to record um, the book ID. So book ID is the book ID. And now if I restart my server and curl this again, and I'm also going to create an error. Um, and then give it a couple seconds. Ah, there it is. We now have two spans. Um, so we can see that there was the incoming HTTP span, the one that was automatically created by Dino. Um, and then we have the one that I, that I just created with my book one attribute on it. And actually, let's also look at an error span. Um, this is what it looks like in the error case. So here, I can very quickly, just by looking at this, tell that the reason this request failed is because the database request failed. Um, so I could look in this more, and I can see, oh, the message is book is missing, missing author. Cool. I now know book two is missing an author. Immediately know where to fix the problem. So let's create a new file here that I'm going to call main.ts, I guess. Um, and we're just going to do a fetch call from this one service to the other service, just getting the first book, like this. OK, and we're going to log out the book. And I still have the server running, the original one. I'm going to start up a second server. And this requested the book. That worked. And if I head back to Grafana, you can see that I have a new trace. And if you look carefully here, you can see that the service is not the book API anymore, but it's the fetcher, because that's where the trace started. And if I click on this, and I have three spans, one green and two purple. Um, this is the outbound fetch span from my first process. And it automatically propagated into the second Dino process um, where I can continue. So you can imagine that if you have a lot of microservices, this could be really deep, right? Um, you could even instrument your database and like, have your database query planner output spans that you can see in here. Again, open Grafana and look at metrics this time. We're going to look at um, duration seconds count. I know this is a bit confusing of a name for what I'm going to show you. This is the number of HTTP requests processed um, in any given minute over the past, uh, well, I don't know, whenever this graph started. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to send like 
a quintillion requests to my API here and um, see if we can see them in the metrics. The metrics only update once a minute, which is fine, um, but that means we may have to wait for a second. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um, so you can see there was um, a bunch of requests, and actually, if I want to uh, see this by status code, I can do that. I now have the number of requests by status code, so over the last however many minutes, uh, I got 3,000 requests with a 200 status code and one request with a 500. And every time I make another request, um, that would result in a 500 that would obviously show up here too.